Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Java tutorial. So we're going to step up our Java tutorial a little bit and we're going to break slightly away from the Tamagotchi tutorial and make another type of tutorial just so we can get the more basics of Java. So what we're going to do is create a new form and a new section on our main menu and when you see it, because I'm not going to tell you what it is, but by the end of the tutorial you'll know what it is. But what we're going to do first is go to default packages, right click new, and I'm going to create a new J frame form, and we'll just call it game 2 for now, and we'll click finish. And um, what we're going to be learning, the main code, is actually a timer, and whatever language you go to, except if you get like HTML, well actually even HTML's got one, timers in game development are used very highly and I guarantee you nearly all game engines have some sort of timer. Java timer, C sharp timer, Unity timer, even if you have to create it yourself you will need a timer at some point. So we're going to experiment with timers today. So I've got a game to here and I'm just going to double click on the side of the form and I'm going to give it a size of 512 by 600 and you're going to say why that's a really weird one by 512, 612 then, is because it's Java, no, it's that's it's just weird so you've got to try and get the right size because I want a squared one look 600 by 512 that's apparently square to Java don't ask me but what I'm also going to do is go into the properties and find maximum size and I'm going to set it to 512 by 512 so it can't go any bigger but I'm going to set the first one to 6 because you know what Java's like and I'm going to set the minimum size to 612 by 512, boom, to make it squared, and I'm going to find where it says resizable and untick it. So what we've basically done there is maximum size is when the window stretches or you stretch it, it will go to maximum 612 by 512 so it won't go any bigger. And then the minimum size, you can't pull it down, 612, 512. And I've unchecked resizable, because then that means you can't resize it when you're on the game. So if we were to play it, we can't get to that one yet. But we can resize this, yes? So you can see it's automatically stretching. That's for different devices. Whereas this, we're only making it for one device at the moment. So unticking resizable will make you stop doing that. So we're going to go to the main menu. And... It, going to copy this Tamagotchi button, paste it right here, and we'll call it Game 2. In, f in fact, we'll call it Freedom Fighters. I like that name. That's a cool name. So yeah, if you wanted to make it so it's Freedom and Fighters and underneath it like that, you'll have to use HTML, which is a bit awkward. So all you simply do is put that in. Um, that one. Okay, it's apparently not letting me zoom in anymore. That one there. Less than sign, P, more than sign. And then when you click OK, it should not do it because we never told it to be in HTML. So if you click it and click plain text and choose custom code, okay, maybe not. Put HTML at the beginning of it, the HTML. So that should do it. Hopefully. So we click it and you can see Freedom Fighters. Apologies for that. So all I did was went to text. Oh dear. Click it. Make it the right size. There. And all I did was go to text. Click the little dot 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 next to it. HTML. You can even lay it out in here if you so wish. Like so. So HTML. HTML. Freedom Fighters. P. So HTML means start HTML code. So HTML with a slash means end HTML code. P means new paragraph. Yeah, basics. So click OK, you've got that. Double click it and we'll type right here, exact code as above. Game 2, form equals new game 2. We've covered this before. If you've not covered this before, all we're going to do is declare the name of our form, which we declared as game 2. Make it a new variable type, so form equals new game 2. So create a new instance of that class basically stick in the RAM say create this form and then we set that form dot set visible to true so we can actually see it on screen click play and then we should be able to play click submit and then you get freedom fighters click freedom fighters boom and now you can see 
512 by 512 real window and we can't drag it. Honestly I don't know why 512 by 512 is different in Java. Every other language it's 512 by 512. That's for a square window. But yeah. So um, if you see anything what looks slightly different, the issue is I lost my Java project and my friend Darwin really really kindly gave gave me his project in which he was following Java so we can use it. So yeah, so we've got the new game open and sorry if it seems like I'm a bit rushing, we've got a lot to cover and I am on five minutes. Yes, we should be fine now. So what I'm gonna do is get a button or a label, button or a label. Hmm, what can we a label? Boom. So we've got a label and we'll make it squared so it's like um well, you know what squared is. So they're both the same X and Y. And we'll fi we'll double click it, see if we can do that. No, it's different. Okay, so maximum size we will set to 64 by 64. Minimum size, 64, 64. Then we'll find preferred size. So, so we have to set all this because if it's on a different platform, it'll change. So preferred size we'll set to 64 by 64. Boom. And as you can see, it's completely wrong again. Good job, Java. Try 32. That's wrong again. Okay, we'll try 40. We'll just make it look square. That'll do. And in here, we'll type is the text alien. So we've got an alien. Ooh, scary. I'll put it back normally. I don't mind. So we've got an alien. So what we're going to do is right click, change variable name, and we'll call it alien01. And now what we're going to do is go into our source and in public game 2, which is the first thing what's called, or second thing, it's either that or main, but it's okay, it's, this is the second thing what's called. But after this here, after it's drawn everything to your screen, right here is where we put what code we want as soon as it starts. So as soon as it starts, we want to activate our timer to move him from there to there, correct? So, first thing we're going to do is set up our timer. Really simple. So if you think about it, we're creating a timer. So we're going to declare the variable or class timer and we'll just say timer equals new timer. Just like that. So just like any other one, declaring the class somewhere in libraries or test libraries in JDK, somewhere in here there'll be a timer and we've just basically created a new one of those. So a timer is a bit different with how you got to create it. Because one, you have to import the class. So if you all enter on it and just make sure you choose add input for Java util timer. Don't choose swing, it's a different thing. So java.util.timer at the top. If you choose something else, you, it won't work. Simple. So this is where it gets a bit different. So what we've got to do is create another variable called timer task, which is basically telling a timer to do something. So we'll call it task equals new timer task bracket bracket and now you'd be thinking you want to put a semicolon but don't you need to put the squiggly brackets sorry I zoom in you need to put the squiggly brackets like that you'll get errors but what you have to do is click timer task alt enter add import for ta java util right there look java.util timer java.util timer task and then in here we do again public void run and then the, in here is where we put what code we want when the timer ticks so you're going to see we still get errors and these errors are common so don't worry about it all we've got to do is put a semicolon so now you can see why I think it's a bit weird it's different but so we create a class then inside that class we actually make it into a function and then we end it with a semicolon so it's a weird class so you could put it all on one line but it's different so in here, if we just test it by going, ah, come on, system.out.println, and then here we type, it works. And then you'll wonder why it's like this. What that'll do, is when we put a semicolon on it, is it'll print it in there. It'll go, it works, it works, every time it ticks, but it's not going to work yet. That'll probably run, but once, it'll go run, gone. We need to set how long it waits until it starts, when it, how long it repeats itself, because we're making a repeating. 
So this is where we tell that timer, instead of to run once at processor speed, we're going to tell it to repeat itself with a delay and a initial, um, a, oh, I forgot the word for it, never mind, we'll, you'll just see when we get there. So, really simple to do, we're going to type timer dot schedule, as soon as I figure out how to spell this, uh, one minute, yes I did just Google schedule SC there, schedule at fixed rate, press enter, and then you'll get task null width. So it's already put everything in for you nearly. So schedule at fixed rate basically means at a fixed rate, so say every 10 seconds, 3 seconds, 5 seconds, repeat that timer. So basically create a new timer, set, the ta set whatever task it has so it's going to print it works, and then repeat it at schedule. So this first parameter here means what task do you want it to do. So you could technically have one timer, 50 tasks, and just keep pasting this over and over again to perform each one. So this second part is a delay. Do you want it to delay when it first starts? So when your game first starts, do you want it to wait 10 seconds, then play, or do you want it to continue? See, I'll show you what it looks like with the delay after we've done it. So width here is... I don't know why it says width, that's wrong. But... This is your timer, so it's in milliseconds. So don't forget, a thousand milliseconds in one second. If you want to write that down, do it now. One thousand milliseconds equals one sec. Yes? So in here, say we want every one second, we want it to print that. Okay. Every f half a second, I'm going to make it print it. So, yeah. So if we click run, that should work. So look in this output right here. So, as you can see, we get an error. That is kind of good. It means we can fix it. So, so the error is really simple. Um, the schedule at fixed rate is an integer. So it asks for a task and two integers. Whereas Java has automatically put null for us, it throws an error, just put zero. Yeah, NetBeans. Not Java, it's really NetBeans. I should stop blaming Java. But yeah, so I am moving to Eclipse so it means we have to manually do everything. So you can see nothing's changed, but half a second, half a second, half a second, half a second, half a sec. It's printing, it works over and over again. So you want to see, where, if I click play when it's maximised, watch the output, submit, watch the output, instantly, as soon as I click it. If we change this to, well, 5,000, oh dear. 5,000, it will wait 5 seconds and then begin printing. So, boom. There you go, 5 second delay. It could have helped me talking through that so you don't know I paused it, but 5 second delay. Really simple. So I don't want a delay, I want it to play instantly. So, what time are we on? 13 minutes. So we've got 2 minutes, let's do something cool. So in here, uh, above here then, I'm going to type boolean uh, move left equals true. So, in here, if move left, apologies, move left, so if move left equals true, which it does, so then we'll, what do we want to do? We want to move alien01 dot set location and it's not telling us, so I have to guess code all this. So alien one dot set location. So we need the x and the y. So the x will be alien o one dot get location double brackets and then dot x. So just keep along with me here. Dot x and then we're going to go minus five. And you'll wonder why minus five. Well, Java's pivot points are weird. Zero is actually to the right side and not the left side. So going minus will take you towards it. It's, I don't know, just put minus if you want to go left. If you want to go right, put plus. So then we put a comma and then what do you want for the x, y axis? Do you want it to move? We don't, so we're just going to put y. That was good guessing. So alien1.set location, alien1.get location. So what we do is set the X and Y position of it. So set position. 
So keep its exact x position, but minus it by 5, so it move it across a bit, and then keep the exact y position. So every time the timer ticks, it's going to go tick, 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 and move it, right? So underneath this, we're going to type if alien1 dot get location dot x. So we're going to copy all of this because it'll take a while. So if alien1 dot get location dot x is less than zero. So imagine on a number line, you've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Then anything less than less than zero is minus one minus two so if it's at one side of the screen and it moves to the other it'll be less than zero we tell it to move the opposite way do we not so i'm going to put in here move left equals false so then we can copy the entirety of this paste it underneath it here and change it to an else so I'm going to run over this code slowly again in a minute. So if move left equals false, so we want it to move right in that case, alien that set location plus 5, and if it's more than 512, then we set it to true. So if move left is true, which it is, then we want it to move left no matter what. So get the alien's position, move it to the left, at the exact same Y position. So it's going to go across our screen to the left. When it gets to the edge of the screen, we want it to go the other way. So the time is still, still ticking. It'll go move left equals false. So if move left equals false, we want it to move right. So it'll move right across the screen. And yes, I'm drawing on the screen with my hand. So it'll plus it, which means it goes the other way. And then when it gets to the edge of that screen, which we've set as 512, then it go moves left and goes back. So when you see, what I'm going to do first, though, is change the timer from 500 to 10. So it's 10 milliseconds. That's very fast. But yeah. So let's hope this works, eh? Submit. Freedom Fighters. Bing. 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 As you can see, we will... Hopefully you get what it is now. Maybe 10's a bit too fast. We'll try 100. So can you see what it is? In fact, I'll change it to 300. So, hopefully you can see what we're doing right now. That's even worse. 200. I could be sat here for a while. Just play with the timers, really. What you could do if you so wish... As you can see... Can you guess what we're doing yet? 100 was good. If you guessed what game we're going to try and make, put a comment in the description. Just guess. So he goes to one end, to the other end, and he will not stop bouncing between the ends. Yes? So one thing I am going to do, before we finish, because I can see if I, I, I was not do this, is I'm going to go, uh, where is it? Alien1.set location, there. And we're going to copy this entire line. And where we say is move left equals false, I'm going to paste it underneath it. So instead of minus 5, I'm going to put y dot plus 5. So hopefully that should be down. So when it gets to one end, move it down. When it gets to the other end, move it down again. So hopefully, if I turn this back to fifth, well, 10, so we, 10's a bit fast, 30. So we can see it going. So hopefully it should bounce across, and then every time it bounces across, it should move down our screen. So as you can see, it goes, and it moves down. Can you guess what it is yet? Yes, it's going a bit weird there, but yeah. Can you guess what we're doing? Come on, if you can guess, put it in the description. If you can't, don't worry about it. So, thank you for watching. I'll turn it to 10. I hope you liked it. Sorry it was a bit rushed, but I had to get everything in. So our new game is going to be cool. Really cool. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Say goodbye to the alien. Thumbs up. Don't forget to comment about what game you think it is, and I'll see you next time.